Hi, my name is Dr. Anthony Lemaire and I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Today we're going to talk about coronary artery bypass grafting. But before we get started, let's go over the anatomy of the heart. This is the model of the heart. I like to think of the heart in terms of sides. This is the right side, right atrium, right ventricle. This is the left side, left atrium, left ventricle. The blood goes from the left atrium to the left ventricle. Then the muscle here squeezes and pushes blood to this structure. This is the ascending aorta. It carries blood to the, to the brain through these blood vessels. And the aorta goes behind the heart and supplies the other organs, the kidney, the liver, and even the other extremities. There's two major arteries. There's a right coronary artery here, and that supplies blood to the right ventricle. There is a left main artery that divides into the left anterior descending artery and the left circumflex artery. The left anterior descending artery supplies the majority of the blood to the anterior portion of the left ventricle, and the left circumflex supplies blood to the lateral portion of the left ventricle. When we have coronary artery disease, that's basically plaque within the arteries of the heart, and that limits the blood flow to these areas of the heart, and that diminishes the contraction, the ability of the heart to function. With bypass, we can provide additional blood flow to the heart, and that would allow the heart to function better. When someone's going to have surgery, well, first we'll go to the operating room, they'll go to sleep, we'll open up their chest and get on the heart-lung machine. That allows us to safely do the operation. We'll then give medicine to the heart to help the heart relax and not move. One of our assistants will get vein from the lower extremities. That vein will allow us to do the bypass. We'll then take the vein and we'll sew one end of the vein to the ascending aorta and the other end to the target artery, in this example, the right coronary artery. And therefore, the vein will carry blood to the right artery, bypassing the blockage. We'll take another piece of vein and sew it from the aorta to the left circumflex artery, again, bypassing the blockage. And then what we'll do is, we'll take an artery, we don't use vein because this is the most important artery in the heart, we'll take an artery from the left chest, that's referred to the left internal mammary artery, which comes off the left subclavian artery, we'll take that artery and we'll sew it to the LED. In this way, we're providing blood flow to all three arteries. This is a model of the heart before surgery, and this is a model afterwards. The red here is supposed to be the vein that goes from the ascending aorta to the right coronary artery, the ascending aorta to the left circumflex, and this red here is supposed to be the artery that goes to the left anterior descending artery. Now, once the bypass is complete, we come off the heart-lung machine, we try to close the patient's chest and then get them to the intensive care unit. These operations could be about three to four hours, but that can vary depending on if you're doing more than three bypasses or if you're actually doing an additional portion of the operation like a valvular, valvular surgery. Most people spend five days in the hospital, then they go either home or they go to rehab. We do these operations all the time, but there's risk involved. There's risk of infection, there's bleeding risk, there's even a risk of death. That can vary somewhere between two and 3%, but it can be higher depending on the risk factors of the patients. And also if you're doing additional parts of the operation, if you're doing valvular, a valvular portion of the surgery, that can increase the risk. Now, that's a general basic explanation of coronary artery bypass grafting. If you have any additional questions, please let me know. Thank you very much.